Hey there, are you looking for a Java project to practice and improve your Java programming skills? You just landed in the right video. In this video, we will see how to create a parking lot in Java. We will see how to do this using object-oriented programming. I will walk you through it and we will see how you can come up with the classes and the methods that we are going to need. And then I will show you how you can fill up the methods with code. Our goal will be parking the car in the parking lot. So if we find a free space, then we will park the car. This is our goal. So let's start by writing down what we know about the problem. And as we write it down, the classes and methods that we need will quickly surface. Okay, so what do we know about the problem? The parking lot has levels and then each level has rows. Then each row has parking lots and we want to park a car. So to park a car in the parking lot, I will look at each level and then find a free parking slot. And as soon as I find this free spot, then I will park the car. So if we look at the sentences, they start giving us clues of the classes that we're going to need. Let's look at the names. We have parking lot. Then we have levels. We have parking slot. And then we have the car. So those are our classes. So let's look at the verbs now as it can give us some clues of methods that we are going to need. So we want to park and we need to find a free space. So now we know that the classes that we need and we know some of the methods. So let's see how this will work. We have our parking lot which is one class, then the parking lot has several levels. So that means that we will have a field in this class holding a collection of levels. And then we will have the level class, which is going to hold a few pieces of information, the floor. So this means if the floor is number one, or if it's the first floor or the second floor, the number of rows in the level as well and then the slots that are taken and this will be a collection of parking slots and also we will have the car class all right so the program will start by trying to park a given car then it will check in each level until it finds an available space and then we will park the car in the free space and return a boolean to indicate whether we were able to park the car or not. If the parking lot was full, for instance, and then we try to park the car, then the program will return false. Perfect. So now that we have an overall understanding of the classes that we are going to need and some of the methods, Let's start with the exciting part. Let's start writing this in Java. First, we are going to create the classes from the smallest to the biggest. So we will start with the car. So for a car, all the information we need is the license number. So I will add a field a string, which I will call license number. And I will also add the constructor so we can create objects of this class later. Next class is going to be the parking slot. A parking slot is going to need four pieces of information. The row, the column and the level so we know where the slot is within the parking. These three fields are numbers so they will be integer types. And another important piece, in case the slot is taken, we want to know the car which is occupying the space. 
So the type is going to be car and then I will call this field car occupying slot. And I will add the constructor as well, passing all the arguments. Next class is going to be the level class. So our level class is going to have four fields. One is going to be the level number to know if it is the first floor, the second floor, and so on. And the number of rows. And next, we will need to know the slots that are taken. So this is going to be a list of parking slots and then the number of slots in a row, which is going to be two, just to keep it simple. In this class, we are going to need two methods, one which is going to be called find available space, as we have seen before, and this will return a parking slot. And we are going to leave this empty for now. And in case there is a free space in the level, we want to park the car. So I will add another method, which is going to be called park. And this method is going to have one argument, which is going to be the car that we want to park. And it will return a boolean to indicate whether or not we were able to park the car in the level. And the last class is going to be the parking lot class. So a parking lot will have different levels. So one of the fields is going to be a list of levels. And I will also create a constructor for this class. And this class will only have one method, the one to park the car. So I will call it park and I will pass a car as the argument. And it will return a boolean indicating if the program was able to park the car in any of the levels. All right, so we have the structure of our parking lot program. Let's start writing the details about how the program will work. Now we are going to start from the top with the parking lot class. We are going to do the park method. So this method is going to go through each level and try to park the car. If it was able to park the car in the first level, it will return true. Otherwise, it will try with the next level. And if there is no space in any of the levels, it will return false. So since I have to check every level, I will use a for loop and inside the loop, I will say if I can park the car in this level, so level.park.car, then return true. Otherwise, continue, which will skip the iteration and try with the next level. And if the program gets to the end, it means it couldn't park the car, so I will return false. Of course, this won't work yet because we haven't completed the code for the level class. So let's do that. This class is going to need a constructor as well. So let's do that. And now let's fill up the methods. Let's start with the park method, which is slightly simpler. What does this method need to do? It will try to find a free space in the level using the find available spot method. And then if it finds one, it will put the car in that space and return true. Otherwise it will return false. So I will call the find available method and this will return a parking slot, which I'm going to call free space. Then I will check if free space is null. And if so, I will return false because that means that there is no space in the level. Else, if the space is not null, it means there is a free space. So I will take this parking lot. And for that, I'm going to need to add a method in the parking slot class, which I will do in a second. 
We need to add the taken slot in our list to keep track of the spaces that are occupied and then return true. Okay, so to complete this, let's add the missing method in the parking slot class. This method is going to be called park as well and it's going to have one argument, the car that we want to park. And all this method is going to do is updating the car occupying slot field. This way we are indicating that the space is not empty anymore. Now let's go back to the level class and before we add the taken slot, we are going to park the car inside. So free space dot park dot car. All right, so we are very close to finish. There is only one method left, the find available spot method. So this method is going to return a free slot in this level. So let's start with the simplest case. The level is full. How would you know that? The total number of spaces in the level is the number of rows by the slots per row. So if the size of the taken slot is bigger or equal to the total spaces, then we know that there are no spaces left, so I will return null. Another simple case to consider is the opposite. The level is empty. In this case, we will return a parking slot in the first space, which is row 0, column 0, and the level where we are at the moment. And the last case, what if there are some empty spaces? We are going to assume that the cars are parked one after the other. This means if we grab the last item in the taken slot list using the column attribute, we can figure out if there are free spaces in that row. If the car is at the end of the row, then the free space is in the next row. Ok, so let's write this in Java. I will grab the last taken spot. So I will say taken slots dot get and um, here the index of the last item, which is going to be taken slots size minus one. So that gives us the last slot where a car was parked. And now I will say if the column of the last occupy space is less than the number of columns in that row. There is a free space in that row, so I will return new parking slot, the same row and the next column and the level where we are. And if not, the free space is in the next row. So I will return new slot in the next row, column zero, and then the level where we are. And that's all. We just completed the parking lot program in Java. This is amazing work. So I have created a small test to check if our program is working. Um, and you can find this test and the source code in the description below. This test will create two levels with four spaces each and then create a parking lot and then I will park eight cars and then when I try to park the car number nine the program will return false because there is no more free spaces. Okay, so let's test it out. Um, perfect, it's all working. So we have reached the end of the tutorial where you have learned how to code a parking lot in Java. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you in the next one.